So, all right. Hello, everyone. I'm Dennis. Uh, I work in the canonical uh, Ubuntu desktop team. I work mainly on Flutter applications, and I prepared a small workshop uh, where we show you how to test Flutter applications in general, focusing a bit on the Ubuntu desktop. And uh, if any of you has a working Flutter environment, wants to follow along, you can uh, follow me with my sample application that I, that I will show you in a second. Uh, but before I, I show you exactly what I'm, what I'm doing, I will tell you a bit uh, what my idea is. So I want to talk about three basic uh, things that you need to do to test an application uh, and separate all of these things uh, in terms of, of like their scope. And the first one that I hope everyone is at least basically familiar with is just unit testing, where we test uh, the business logic of the application and are completely uh, agnostic about the user interface and everything that's displayed on the screen. Uh, the second thing I want to show is how to test the actual widgets, meaning in, in terms of Flutter applications, the widgets are the, the, the components that make up the widget tree, which are the things that are displayed on the screen in the end, and uh, the components that the user can interact with. And those can be tested in isolation, uh, ignoring the, the business logic, which should already be, be tested. So we purely test the user interface and how it, how it works, uh, how it interacts with the user. And the last thing I want to show is uh, what can be done really nicely in Flutter is uh, integration testing, where you test the interplay of all the components, uh, all the user interface, and how it uh, works in a simulated real life environment. All right. So in case you want to follow along, uh, there's a repository that you can clone. Uh, you will also have access to the slides there. Uh, there's a simple application that I will show you in a second. And it has some, some tests prepared. And I will show you the app in a second. It's like the hello world of user interface applications. It's like a, a to-do note app where you have a list of tasks that, can, that you can create. Uh, and there are checkboxes. And you can check tasks and delete tasks. And that's kind of what it does. Um, as I said, I have prepared some, some tests that will serve as uh, simple examples. And the other tests that are there are just unimplemented. And if you run them, they will fail. And in the next couple of minutes, I will show you uh, how to implement some of these tests, give you some time to play around uh, on your own if you want. And uh, then I will show you, I will introduce some of the basic concepts bit by bit. So if you get stuck at some point or just uh, want to skip something, you can just do the next step in case you're interested. All right, anyone still copying links? OK, not so many people are actually doing things. That's fine. All right. Before I continue with this, let me quickly show you the application. Sorry? Yes, give me a, I will just, uh, I, I don't want you to see any code, I just want to see, see the application, which you can see now. So this is what it does. You can ignore everything on the, on the right. Let me remove the slides and everything. Uh, this is the application. It's a very bare minimum application. It has a title bar. It has a plus button and not much else. And what it does is you can add, is this readable, readable? It is. Uh, you can add some tasks if you want, uh, like that. Maybe a second one. And the other amazing feature it has is you can mark task is done. What happens? The checkbox gets tracked and uh, the text gets crossed out. And the other feature it has is you can delete the task. So a very simple application with very minimal user interface, but at the same time, it accomplishes a few things that you encounter all the time uh, in user interfaces uh, in, the, in the desktop environment. OK, so now following the first three, the, the three steps of my outline, uh, how do we test the independent parts of this application? And the first thing I want to show you uh, is just basic unit testing. Well, as I said in the beginning, we just test the, the logic of, of the tiny learn program. And in order to test this, you don't really need to know exactly what the implementation looks like. And in fact, it's even better if you don't really know what the implementation looks like, because we don't want to test the uh, implementation, but we want to test the public API, so to speak, of our core component of this program. 
So what you see now is a very simplified version of the uh, main model that models uh, this task list that we just had. It just shows uh, the, the, the public API, so the, the functions and methods it provides uh, for you to interact with it. So if you know basic Flutter, you will have seen this before. It's a typical like change notifier, meaning it's a class that whenever you change a value, it will notify uh, the widget tree and this part of the, of the tree will be rebuilt. And the method it has is just you can add a task, you can remove a task, and you can set its state to done or undone. And it, it also provides you access to the list of tasks uh, by means of just a simple property. So you can now imagine uh, what it would be like to, to just test this class. We want to make sure that we can add tasks, we want to make sure we can remove tasks, and we want to make sure that uh, we can change the, the, the doneness of a task. And we don't need to know in detail what the, the implementation of this looks like. So just as a, as a starter, and to, to show you how testing in Flutter works and how simple it is, I will provide you a very simple example of a unit test. And this is the function you can see uh, right now. Um, so Flutter has its own testing package, which you can use. And what you do in this, in this uh, or how, how you use it is, um, you have this, this, this function just called test, uh, where you can create a test, give it a name. In this case, we want to test uh, adding a task. You provide a function, and in this function, you perform the actual test. And typically, there are like three steps that you follow. You set up a, a component that you want to test. In this case, it's just uh, the, the business logic containing class, meaning the list. Uh, what you then do with this list is you perform an operation on it. And this can, in this case, be adding something to it. It can be removing or changing the state uh, of the object. And once we have done this, we verify the result. So the only new, new things uh, that you encounter here is this test function. Um, and then there's the uh, assertive statement, which in Flutter is called expect. And this gets two parameters. The first one is the object that you want to check. And the second one is the matcher. It can be as simple as just a value that you want to compare against. But it can also be something more complicated. And Flutter provides a lot of like defaults or common matchers, as, it, as it's called. For example, the first one here, you, you check uh, a list object. And you can, can check that it has the correct length of one component or one uh, element. Then you can also access like the first element and make sure that the first element is actually the task you just added. And you can check that by default, the task is marked undone. So this is the, the basic idea, three steps, adding a component, uh, performing an action, and, and checking that the action that you performed actually results in, in what you expect. So if you want to follow along, um, you can have a look at the code and uh, add the remaining tests that are still open. And uh, yeah, if you want to follow along, you can do this in maybe a minute or two because it's rather short. But I don't see very many people in the audience, at least in real life, being very engaged in this. So I can quickly uh, show you uh, my solution for this. And we can talk a bit about this. Um, if you're following and have the repository in front of you, um, the solutions will not be visible by default. So we have this task list as a starting point. Um, I've also added some, um, can you read this by the way? No. I can make it bigger, I hope. Yeah. Can you move this? So some simplifications that you will encounter once you become more comfortable with testing in general, you can extract uh, things that you do in every test in, in, in like a setup function, which will be run before every test. So you can create the same uh, object before you start each test. And, re and uh, you make sure that you always start with a fresh object that you, that you want to test and don't depend on tests that have uh, run previously. So this is the test we have seen before. And the remaining ones are what I chose is like testing that the initial state is just an empty list, removing a task, marking is, uh, it as done. And um, to not waste so much time. We will cheat. 
And I will quickly go uh, through very minimal examples and, and show you how to implement those tests. But uh, if you understand how, the, how this one works, the other one should be rather trivial. So in order to check that the initial state of the list is actually empty, we can just write, expect that the list of tasks is empty and be happy with this. Um, the other tasks, uh, the, sorry, the other tests are a bit more involved, let's say. If we want to remove a task, uh, what we have to do in advance is add some tasks to our list. And for that, I prepared some, some test tasks in the beginning uh, that we can happily add to our list. Then we remove one of them and afterwards check that our expectations are met. Meaning we added three tasks, we remove one, we expect there's still two, and we expect that the ones that are left are number one and number three. And one important thing whenever you write tests is that you should make sure that they fail when you want them to fail. Because otherwise you're not really sure what you're actually testing. So let me quickly stop what's running in the background. And I'll show you that these tests uh, are working by, for example, running the remove task test. Uh, it's running for a second. Always takes a bit of time. I think it doesn't change the state because it ran before and didn't uh, fail. If I do any, any change in my, in my code, uh, for example, I can just break it, run the test again, and hopefully it will fail now. And it does. So this is what you should always do. Like you write a test, make sure it fails uh, when you want it to fail, and make sure that it actually does test the logic that you, that you want to test. And there's many, many ways, obviously, on how to test applications. There's many different guidelines. Uh, there's many different ideas of what to test, what not to test. And I don't wanna really go, want to go into details of, of all these things because it really depends a lot on the context, on what kind of application you're testing, uh, how large it is, uh, how much time you have. There are many, many, many different aspects to this. So I will purely focus on uh, giving you a good starting point for a very simple application and uh, show you just by means of running examples how you can do this easily uh, in Flutter applications. Okay, now I change the code back and you see the test succeeds. All right, so to more interesting things, um, let's actually go into the the part of testing the user interface, which is something that's uh, really nice in Flutter. Because what we've seen before is something you should already know from, I don't know, Java, Python, whatever. But here it's really interesting that you can, uh, in, a, in a very simple way, interact with the widget tree, so the core of your Flutter application, the user interface, um, change its state and see and, and test that the changes actually reflect uh, the state of the application and, and yeah, check that the widget behaves the way you want it to behave. So one isolated widget of our application is just this tile, which represents a single task. And this tile has a, a text, like it's, it has a label, it has a checkbox, whether, which represents whether it's done or not. And it has this tiny trash bin, uh, which you can use to, de to delete the task. And I've kept this widget very simple. There's no complicated state management. There's no provider or nothing. It just uh, it's a it's a it's a stateless, a stateless widget which has callback functions uh, for removal and changing um, the state of the of the widget. So what we want to test here is uh, first of all that it looks the way it looks, or that the lo it it looks the way somebody specified it. And this you can do also to various degrees. Like if you are very keen on making sure this design never changes, you can change, or you can check that the colors are the, the, the colors you like, the font is the font you like, stuff like this. But you can also keep it very agnostic and just say, I just wanna have a text, I wanna have a checkbox, I wanna have an icon, and I don't care about the details so much. Which, especially in early stages of development, is very useful because the UI can still change a lot, and the only things you wanna change, uh, sorry, you, you, you wanna test is the, the functionality and not really uh, the look and feel. So as an example, um, we can take a look at uh, how to test the, the callback function that would be called if you click on the icon button, uh, which is used to remove a task. 
So what I've done here is again these three steps. Uh, skipping the first line for a second, we have, um, sorry, selection doesn't work well. Uh, we create our widget that we're interested in, which is the task tile. Uh, and we already provided like a callback function, uh, this remove function, which sets a variable that we control uh, to true. So we can afterwards verify that this callback has actually been called and change the a variable that we have control over just in the testing framework. And in order to uh, instruct Flutter to render this widget and then interact with it, um, there's this, this tester object which gives you, in principle, access to the entire widget tree. You can click on things, you can put them on the screen, stuff like this, and access properties of widgets. Uh, here, because I'm using uh, the Ubuntu Yaro theme, uh, I've, I've simplified the code a bit so that you can just interact, by, uh, interact with it by using this, this wrapper function. Uh, if you're just writing a general Flutter app, you can just use the, the pump widget function, which doesn't need to take care of all these theming and so on, but it's not incredibly important for the moment. All right, so how do we test this? We want to make sure that we only test the user interface part and nothing that concerns the actual model, which we have already tested in a separate file. So after setting up the widget, we have to perform an action. And performing action this kind, in this sense means we want to click on the remove button. In order to click to the, on the remove button, we first need to find it. And for this, Flutter provides uh, these common finders. And besides finding widgets by type, you can find widgets by text, by their icons, by many different things. Also, very generally, you can have something like widget predicate, where you say it's a widget and has the following properties, and it will turn the list of widgets that it finds or doesn't find. So first of all, we want to make sure that the widget is actually on the screen. And for this, we have uh, an assertion where the, the thing that we expect, the remove button, uh, will match this matchup calling finds one widget. And you can guess what it does. It will find one widget. And if it doesn't, it will fail. Once we have made sure the widget is actually on the screen, we can use our tester to tap on the button. And then we expect that this callback is called and uh, our variable removed is set to true. OK, any questions so far? This is a bit of new information in one go, but uh, okay, at least none from the, from the audience. Wonderful. OK, so yeah, to summarize, the only new concepts you really need to know in Flutter is we have a, a tester and a finder. Use the tester to interact with the widget tree. Use the finder to check what is in the widget tree and then base your assertions on, on those things. OK, as I said, in this task tile, we don't have only the, the one callback. We have another callback. And we can also do other checks, meaning checking that uh, the layout is the one, uh, the one we want. We can check that the text gets crossed out. We can be very creative with, which, uh, with what we want to test. And again, as an exercise, if you want to follow along, um, you can fill in the remaining methods. And here are some guidances uh, what you can use. I already introduced you to this tester and this find thing. And I said with this tester, you can also access properties of widgets, which you can, for example, use to verify that this text is, is crossed out. And again, I will just show you uh, what, we, what we already have. This one. All right. OK, the lower one is the one I just showed you. And again, I have done some simplification. So I've uh, extracted the setup of the widget. Well, have I? I have not. OK, it's, it's just the same as on the slides. Uh, we create our task file here, interact with it, and verify it. And if we don't want to check the removal of a task, but for example, uh, we want to, let's start from the beginning. Uh, we want to see uh, what, what the widget looks like if the task is still open. Maybe it's a bit, it's phrased a bit badly. What I mean is there's a, a task where the checkbox is unchecked. So we can just create it. We don't care about any callbacks. We make sure it's shown on the widget. And then we verify that the text uh, that we created the task with is actually rendered in the widget. And then again, uh, we check for a checkbox and make sure it's rendered on the screen, meaning we use the find one widget uh, matcher again. And afterwards, uh, using the tester.widget function, um, 
we can access the value of the actual widget and make sure that there's no check marks in the no check mark in the box. The other thing we can test is uh, the opposite state. So we have a task that is marked as done. We do the same things. The only thing that changes is we ensure that the line is uh, uh, that there's a line crossing through the text, and that the checkbox is this uh, uh, in the state where there's a, a check mark in the box. You can, as I said, get more creative, write more tests, be more explicit, be less explicit. All these things are kind of up to uh, up to you. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. Why did you say um, that you have like style question mark slash operation? What's your question? Ah. Okay. Sorry. Can you use the first two more? I was just asking why there's a question mark right there. Uh, yeah. This is a Dart specific thing. Uh, the the Dart language has a feature called null safety. Uh, so variables that can in principle be null uh, are marked ex explicitly with a, with a question mark. And uh, so this expression here means uh, this object can have a null value. If it is not null, we access its decoration uh, property. But if it was null, you couldn't access this and would raise an exception. But the question mark makes sure you only access this if, if this is not null. So it's a really nice feature of, of, of the Dart language. It's, it, it was introduced in, in Dart 2, and uh, by now it's very established, but it used to create also a lot of problems migrating old flat applications to Dart 2.0 or 3.0, I don't know which. which. Right. Yes, exactly. Do you have a question? It, it's not a question. I just want to uh, state that the uh, style of the coding there is uh, nullable chaining, if you want to Google it. Thank you. All right, more remarks or questions? OK. I'm seeing that we don't have incredibly uh, a lot of time. So if you want to follow along uh, or, follow, or follow the exercises at a later point, you can, as I said, download them and, exer and, and uh, access them from, from GitHub. There are two more exercises where you can uh, interact with this, with this dialog that appears once you create a new task. Uh, and because we're running out of time, I want to show you uh, the, the last point that I want to address, meaning integration tests. And maybe this is the most interesting part, because you can see uh, how your app can get tested automatically without user interaction. So just to quickly go, go through this, testing the task dialog is a similar idea. Uh, some new things that would happen here is that uh, it doesn't really just rely on callbacks, but instead you provide the object that you're operating on uh, as a parameter. And uh, this needs kind of a new concept uh, compared to what I talked about before, because since we want to separate these things and only test the UI and not the actual object, we have to kind of mock the object that is being uh, mocked out, as we say. For this, uh, I like to use uh, what's called a library called Mocktail, uh, which doesn't rely on code generation. There's other uh, other packages which generate code and you have to regenerate the mocks and it's always a bit of a mess. With this one, it's a bit simpler. And you can create these, these kind of fake objects which you can control within your test environment and make sure that they represent exactly what you want. And especially if, you, if, you, if they are services that fetch data from the internet and all these things which you don't want to do in tests, you have to use these mock objects and operate uh, with those. OK. I will skip those exercises. The last thing I want to mention is if you have some sort of state management uh, using, for example, the provider package, uh, you would pass your list uh, in a different manner. So uh, for example, this task page, which is the entire page of, uh, that is shown at the beginning, um, accesses this, this list by means of this provider. And in your test, you would actually have to explicitly uh, like provide the, the provider uh, when you actually create the object that you're testing. Okay, but the last thing I want to talk about, since we are close to the end already, is integration tests. And what they do is they really uh, run your entire app. So this is what I want to highlight here. It starts with something app.main, meaning it runs the app uh, the same way a user would do, meaning 
if you have a, an app that talks to an outside service via the internet, you should make sure these things are, are there, are reachable, maybe there's a test case somewhere, and it really simulates the entire environment and nothing is mocked out. And I have prepared a simple integration test um, to show you where I have slowed down um, some of the things that are actually happening. Let's see if it works. It might take a while to launch. So what this app, uh, what this test does, it will create a new task, uh, check the task, afterwards delete it. And in between, there are some pauses. And what you will hopefully see is that the application just opens and in a, in a testing CI it would open, uh, like not visibly, but like in a, in a virtual X server or something. But here you see it actually runs, opens the dialog, now it enters the, uh, the text, checks the box, and then deletes the task. And after all of these things, uh, we have expectations. You can always see these are the, the, the times where the application paused. So after each of these steps, we, we perform a check like we did before. It might seem that we're kind of duplicating some of the checks because we have already verified that the list behaves the way we want. We have verified that the individual widgets perform the way we want. But here, everything is really completely uh, contained in one single test. And you can also see, if you just look around this test a bit, that we don't access any of the, thing, any of the things explicitly that we have tested before. We really check only what is visible on the screen. We tap on objects, and we check that widgets render the things we want them to render. Yes, and uh, yeah, with these integration tests, you can also get uh, as crazy as you want and uh, as detailed as you want. Uh, currently, we're using them, for example, in the Ubuntu installer uh, to check um, that each of the steps does exactly what it's supposed to do, but we keep it as general as possible so that style changes uh, that can still happen quite often uh, don't force you to rewrite the entire test because this obviously can slow down development by a lot. So these things are always very valuable to have. And um, if you consider writing tests for yourself, uh, the steps I just showed you are kind of uh, the order of, of importance to a certain degree. Uh, like in my experience, it is useful to have a lot of unit tests for each of the classes. Uh, make sure that everything that you have written there is, is well tested and uh, works well. Uh, and then the next step is having widget tests, making sure that everything runs on the screen follows whatever your constraints are, and you can make them as tight or loose as you want. And the last thing that you have is also the one, the test that uh, the more, most fragile in a way, because the integration test might rely on some sort of external service, which sometimes might not be available. It might break easily because it's sensible uh, to, uh, sensitive to, to style changes. So always take those with a grain of salt. So if you, if you see a pull request and the integration test fails, it's not a, as big of a deal as if uh, a very important unit test fails. And I want to just give you some resources. Uh, here they're not shown as URLs, but I can click on them so that you see where they lead. Um, most of this is, is very basic stuff that I've shown you, and it's uh, very well, uh, there's a very good article just uh, in the Flutter documentation. Uh, one is just called in the docs, testing Flutter apps, and this, table basically summarizes just what I, what I told you a bit, uh, like the confidence, maintain, maintenance cost, and execution speed, all these things of, of those different types of tests. And there's lots and lots of useful information here. Um, I have too many tabs. Oh, no. It's like that. Okay. The other thing is there's an entire uh, cookbook which introduces all the concepts that I've shown you by some, some examples. It's very similar to what I did, but a bit more explicit. And the last thing I want to show you is there's a collection of example applications uh, written by the Ubuntu Flutter community. There's these three applications. I think the, the ones most worth looking into are called Numbers and Calculator, which are, again, very simple applications that follow uh, well tested uh, guidelines and uh, software architecture, and they all have uh, tests ranging from unit tests, widget tests, integration tests, and even something I didn't have uh, time to talk about, so-called golden tests, 
where you actually uh, verify that a screenshot of your application looks a certain way, especially useful if you test design kind of things. All right, I think that's all I have to say. Are there any more questions from people anywhere that can reach me? There's a question. I hear a lot about different testing techniques being suggested, but often if a speaker suggests a testing technique, it might not still be the right technique that is the most practical to use on a daily basis. So I would like to hear what do techniques do you find the most useful what helps you detect the most effects? Uh, again, this very much depends on, on the context and what you want to test. Uh, I think also it depends a lot on the state of, of development. Like in, in initial development, what's most important is writing unit tests for basic core functionality of the application. Once you have established uh, a certain restraints like test, testing framework that make, ensures that this core functionality is safe. Uh, you won't encounter these tests much, many, uh, as often anymore because they are unlikely to fail because you start developing uh, something else, you might focus on the UI more. And once you start working on the UI, you start writing, writing more widget, te widget tests and uh, depending on how quickly uh, you, you want to change designs, uh, or not, uh, you will interact with those a bit more and maybe come back and change them and so on. So I don't think there's a definitive answer to this. It's just, it depends a lot on the context, which state of the development process you're in and what the feature is that you need to test and how much time you have to test the feature. So no easy answer, I'm sorry. More questions? Uh, one thing that I'm considering writing tests for is uh, taking automated screenshots. Uh, and I know that this has been done on Android, but I'm not sure what the state of this is on Linux. Yes, that is a brilliant question. Uh, we do have some automated uh, screenshot testing uh, for the installer, uh, which is done a bit in a hacky way. Like in principle, there is, uh, you can use custom drivers in Flutter and it provides like a take a screenshot option. Uh, but I don't think it's implemented yet in the Linux implementation of the, the Flutter engine. So this approach doesn't work. What we do instead is we just cheat with the uh, test that I haven't shown you, which I just mentioned, these golden tests. Because in order to uh, first create the golden, golden files, like the images that you, that you test against, uh, you run Flutter with something like dash dash create goldens. And this can be just used to create screenshots of your application, and we abuse this a bit uh, to just test, uh, to just do screenshots in case a test fails. Uh, if you're interested, I can I can show you the code, but it's not the way it's supposed to be, and not the way it's supposed to work. There are other workarounds. You can wrap things in a certain widget, which I don't remember off the top of my head. But then you can uh, extract the actual render object and take this, take the the image data out of it. But it should be implemented at a, at a different level in Linux. I hope it will be done soon. If you're interested, I know some C++ and GDK. Yeah, be, be my guest. Okay. Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you.